Uh, Chad's been prophesying, letting people know that uh, the time is coming. <laughs> uh, the time is coming. Jesus Christ is here. Jesus Christ is here. So we've been talking about this great man. And this week I'm going to cover the beginning of his ministry. And tomorrow, or next week, we're going to talk about some of the actual things that John the Baptist did. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Malachi, the chapter is 4. Malachi, the chapter is 4. Insert himself 
in the affairs of men to change the discourse of what he has already put in motion. It is up to mankind to recognize who God is, to submit our will to God, and to have his will be done. And if we choose not to do his will, he will allow us to face those consequences. God did not make Saul keep the Amalekite king. God did not make Saul keep all the riches of the Amalekites right. after he told him to kill him. Right. God knew that Saul was going to keep him, but he didn't stand in the way. God has a plan. God has a plan. So when he said, I'm sending someone, we may have thought that, well, he's coming. They may have thought then, I can't wait to meet the Messiah. And God just sent him back. Can I remind you that God's time is not our time? Not our time. Huh? Right. How many times, Jan, have we gotten on our knees to pray and said, God, I need this stat. <laughs> now, fix this situation now. And God just say, I'll, I'll wait about 10 years. You're struggling through, wondering if God has forgotten about you. And God is just saying, in my time, Slow down. Slow down. This is just a training ground. You're only going to be here 70, 80, 90 years. If you do what you're supposed to do, you'll be with me in eternity. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. See, here's, here's our problem. Ben, this is our problem. We think that the years that we spend here on earth is it. Mm -hmm. That's what we comprehend. That's what we know, because if we truly, Carl, accept the fact that this is the training ground, we would run really, really hard. It's like when we get in a race, right? If someone told me that every day I had to run in a race as fast as I could, that'd be a problem, right? I'd be like, you know, I'm going to sit out, right? But if you told me right now, that Daryl, if you ran the 100 yard dash as fast as you could, and at the end there'd be a little green man with a pot of gold, I would boogie, boogie, boogie. Right? I'd run as fast as I could because I know there's an end. I know that I got some gold. Can I tell you there's some gold at the end of a life? Yeah, right. Huh? Right. There's some gold. The problem is, too many people are focused on running the race. Oh, I've got, I got other things to do. Mm. If you know that there's something good, you focus on what that end result is. Mm -hmm. We don't have it in our minds, the end result. So we play around with the time that God has given us. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Why do we play around with the time God has given us? And we don't even know how long God's going to give us. Yeah. Can I remind you that when you turn on the TV, people are getting killed all the time? Mm -hmm. Justice Kalia just died, right? The, the United States is in an uproar, all right? What's going to happen here? What's going to happen there? The Bible says God has appointed a time for all men to die. Yeah. What? And then the judgment. Yeah, yeah. It was his time to die yeah. well, the day before yesterday. Mm. As powerful as he was, mm. Chief Justice, he is now dead. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Right? And I don't think that uh, the life didn't stop. They talked about it, right? I still ate pancakes this morning, <laughs> right? Yeah. Nothing changed. Oh, I feel sorry for the man. I'm sorry that he died. But you did not change a thing. Mm -hmm. Life goes on. Yeah. If you think you are important, die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what happens. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Oh, the whole world's going to stop when I die. They're going to stop. They're going to say we feel bad. And then they're going to eat fried chicken. Yes. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The whole I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. What is this terrible day? Let me tell you something. Here's this terrible day. God had gotten to a point where he had already, Eric, here's what he did.
Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Mm -hmm. That means that God always intended for Jesus Christ to come and to redeem his people. However, something needed to happen before his people could be redeemed. Mm -hmm. Because his people first were the Jews. So that meant that the Jews first had to accept this because the Bible says that the gospel salvation begins with the Jew first yeah. and then the Gentiles. Is that what the Bible says? Now watch this. That terrible day is this. God was going to send Elijah. This man was called John the Baptist. Mm. God had already made a decision that if they reject John the Baptist, if they choose not to repent, I am going to destroy these people. There's no more reason because of Jesus cannot make it into the land and give his sacrifice. I am tired of the sins of men. Do you know, Brother Birch, how important John the Baptist was? Can I tell you how important? They had to follow and accept John because the way of salvation, God's promise, is that it had to come through that lineage. God, Jesus, had, John had to open the door. If the door was not successfully opened, Jesus wasn't coming through. And if Jesus didn't come through, mankind was done. That's what he means about the great and the terrible day. Watch this, watch this. Oh, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day. Verse 6. And he, who's he? John the Baptist, will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with the curse. There it goes, right there. Mm. If it doesn't happen, Bill, if it doesn't happen, I'm smiting the land with the curse. These hearts got to be turned around. Mm -hmm. How, Mac, are these hearts going to be turned around? With the baptismal measure of repentance. Mm -hmm. Here's what's happening. And it wasn't just a matter of changing generational uh, hearts. It wasn't a matter uh, of making Gabe and, and, and making uh, 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 Sebastian and making Olivia turn back to the hearts of Daddy. Here's the problem. They have fallen, the children have fallen out of love with Abraham mm. and, and Isaac and, and Jacob. Yeah. They forgot about them. They, they forgot about their, uh, their servitude. They forgot about the Gibraltar and the rocks that they had planted. They were doing their own thing. Even the remnant was. Mm. So those hearts needed to turn back. But you know also what happened? Is that the fathers left the children. Mm. All these crazy kids. They don't know nothing. Mm. We're giving up hope on them. You can't give up hope on your kids. No. Everybody had given up on everybody. Mm. Nobody was following anything. The elders weren't teaching. The, the, youth, the youth didn't respect the elders. And you know what? There was a splintering effect. Mm. And a house divided against itself cannot stand. That's why God said, I'm going to send John. And he's going to turn these hearts back because I need to have the united house. All right. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So then follow me to Matthew chapter. We're just going to take time with John the Baptist. We've got to understand how important this figure is in our lives. <laughs> Matthew, the chapter is 3, beginning in verse 1. Now in those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let's stop right there. Now in the days of John the Baptist, he came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Why did it have to be in Judea gate? It had to be in Judea because God said that the word must first go through the Jews. It could not go through the Gentiles. Judea is where the Jews live. The word had to be to the Jews. It was the Jews who had fallen out of covenant relationship, so it was the Jews that had to be first put back in the covenant relationship. John, the Baptist, there's so many other places that you can be preaching. Why are you in Judea? Because that's what God said needed to happen. Mm, okay. 
Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is this word, repent? What do you mean, John? John, what, uh, uh, how do you repent? I'm going to tell you how you repent. You're going to repent by changing your ways. You're going to repent by acknowledging that what you've been doing for thousands of years is wrong. You're going to repent and get yourself back under the law of Moses. Hmm. This, this, is, this is not Christian dispensation not, yet. Right, not yet. He, 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 they had to get right under the current law. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of like the IRS. <laughs> right? <laughs> Let me tell you, I have a tax practice, a black rhino. People come in, they haven't paid their taxes for a long time. And what they want to do is they want to get a plan with the IRS. Here's what the IRS says. We will not take you uh, uh, and give you a payment plan. First, what you need to do is get everything right. <coughs> and then after you get everything right, then we give you a payment plan. Right? Mm -hmm. So a person comes in, they ain't paid taxes and filed taxes in the past seven years. Before they will give you anything, you got to file all your all taxes. Your taxes. Yeah. You have to be 100% compliant with the IRS before they put you on a payment plan. And then once you're compliant, you have to stay compliant. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the way things work. So John the Baptist is talking about the need to repent. You have to get compliant. You're not ready for Christ yet. Mm. You got to take care of what you already messed up. You got to get back to ground zero. <laughs> right? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John, how do we repent? For this is the one referred to by Isaiah the prophet, sent the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord. Mm. Make his path straight. Now John himself had a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt about his waist. And his food was locusts and wild honey. Mm -hmm. You know what I find very interesting, Kay, about this? Now, God wanted all the Jews who were in a bad relationship to get right with him, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you would think, Carol, that since God wants all these people to change their ways, you would think that perhaps God would make it palatable to them. That God would send a nice-looking man. What? Man who walks up and you just go, oh my goodness, look at him, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who is eloquent in speech. Someone who eats the finest of meals. Someone that people want to be like. Instead, God sends John the Baptist. John, God, are you trying to make sure people don't listen? This man dressed in camel hair. Who does that? He lives in the desert. He don't even live with folks, right? He got bad manners. He's locust and honey. He got a crazy belt around his waist. <coughs> Uncle Mel, I know what you're thinking of that. He, 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 he had, he's not exactly the person that you think God would send to grab the people. Mm. But you know what God is saying? I'm never worried about physical things. You right. ought to be listening. Sure. So sometimes, sometimes, brothers and sisters, the word is right in front of us, and we're getting rid of folks because they don't look like we think they should look. Mm -hmm. They don't act like we think we should act. We have built up in our minds, we have created so many things in our thinking to turn away God because it doesn't look and act and breathe and smell like we think. Yeah. And God ain't changing. Well, this is who I'm sending. You better listen. That's right. That's right. You better listen. Right. This is John. This is John. Then Jerusalem was going out to him, and all Judea, and all the districts around the Jordan. And they were being baptized by him in the Jordan mm -hmm. River, as they did what? Confessed their sins. Yes, sir. Huh? As they confessed their sins. 
obviously, obviously he was teaching something right. Yes. Obviously, they were getting the message. Right. Huh? They were going out to him like you guys go out to concerts. We were talking about last day, baby face. Matt came back talking about, whoo, baby face can sing. Huh? Baby face can sing. Y'all better get focused on Jesus. Right? Jesus, I don't know if Jesus can sing or not, but he got more, he can hit a higher note than baby face. I'm not saying don't go to concerts. Just keep your priorities. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They were coming out. They were coming out to him. They were waiting for him to come. They recognized something was good, and they went out to him. And they were being baptized, and they were confessing their sins. What God had wanted to happen was indeed happening. But when he, meaning John, saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers. Mm. Yeah. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Mm. Right? Here we go. John. Okay, John showing his colors. Yeah. Right? John, John got had, he had been in the desert. I would expect him to be just a little bit honored. Right? <laughs> now, now how's that gonna happen? Right? Mm. Can you imagine me sitting down here? I extend the invitation, right? <laughs> And one of you comes down to get baptized for the remission of your sins. And Dallas, I say, who warned you, you brood of vipers? <laughs> right? Now, it would have to be a different word now because you had brood of vipers. People are like, what? Why are you call me? Right? So you have to have something more up to date to insult somebody with. But basically, they're coming to get baptized, and he insults them. That doesn't quite seem the way what God would want to happen. But nonetheless... John say, he said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bring forth fruit in keeping with repentance. Now, John was a prophet. Stacy, you see what John is in here? Now, you know what we're taught. Somebody wants to get baptized, you don't stand in the way. John said, before you get baptized, you bring forth fruit worthy. I'm not going to let you just jump in here because he knew their mindset. He knew they were coming to be noticed. He knew Valerie that they were coming to put on a show, right? They weren't concerned. They were just trying to be noticed. John said, no, no. And can I tell you, Church of Christ, something that you need to hear? We are not John the Baptist, right? I, I've heard, I've heard some of you in passing, not you specifically. I've heard some of you in passing and talking about others who need to repent. Well, let them show fruit worthy of their repentance. You ain't John the Baptist. Back up. You ain't John the Baptist. You need to understand what we need to learn. Don't step yourself into something that you can't command, right? You don't know what their fruit is. You are not a prophet. If they come and they say, God, forgive me, you know what you do? You forgive. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You forgive. That's right. What the Bible also says, maybe God knows. God knows. We just have to be very, very careful. Now look. If they say, forgive me for stepping on your foot, and they're still stepping on your foot while they're asking for forgiveness, mm -hmm. then you can say, get off my foot first. Mm -hmm. okay. okay? That's the caveat. Mm. And do not suppose that you can say to yourself, we have Abraham for our father. For I say to you, that God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist is coming down the line here. Do you understand what he just said? He has all these Jews who were 
respect Father Abraham, right? And he's letting these Pharisees and Sadducees know, you think you can go back and call on Abraham. But can I tell you something? God can raise up somebody better than Abraham. That's not going to work for you now. That is not going to work for you now. And the axe, listen to this, is already laid at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Boy, I would love to be able to, you know, we can just talk about this for weeks. John the Baptist is laying down some heavy theology right now, right? Not only is he laying down heavy theology, but he is, he is hitting the Pharisees right between the eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Same like Jesus. He is saying something real, real heavy here. Mm -hmm. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me, he's mightier than me. And I'm not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And his winnowing fork is, is at hand, and he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor. And he will gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with an unquenchable fire. Now we're going to come back to this, all right? Because if I expound on this, we'll be here another half an hour at least. But there's some stuff that he is saying here that's very, very important. Very important. John the Baptist is not my goal to just convince you that John the Baptist was a great man and a great prophet. He was. My goal, but hopefully, from hearing the life of John the Baptist, seeing the things that he took on, the way he took it on, it will inspire us to do the same. It is a great feeling when you are on the battlefield fighting for God. I one thing I, I so appreciate are the veterans who served our country. Those are among some of the greatest men and women to me who walk this earth. I am so thankful to Matt and to Carl. They didn't just do a little bit. <laughs> they did a lot of it, giving their lives for the country. I always just think about every now and then when I'm sitting down, watching TV, enjoying great food, spending time with my kids, I catch a thought. I say at this very, very moment while I'm enjoying my life and my kids, somebody is trying to step over a landmine, right? Somebody is fortifying a building under attack. Someone has given their lives for their brother. I can't even fathom that. That is a wonderful thing, and that's what Jesus has done for us as well. Other people deserve to know. There are a lot of people, brothers and sisters out there, who desire to know Christ, who want to understand, that are confused. We have the truth, not because we're so great, but because we have the Bible. And we know how to teach the Bible, and we should teach the Bible. We, we should want to see every soul that we encounter saved. And we don't have to, we don't have to get really sophisticated about the church. All we need to let them know is the gospel. What is the gospel? How did Jesus Christ died. Hmm? How he was buried and how he was raised on the third day. When we preach Jesus, him crucified and the resurrection, embodied in that is the love that Jesus had for us, the sacrifice, the forgiveness of sins, the purchase of the church the purity of life that we live. God has given us all a chance to do what is right. We need to take advantage of that. We are God's people. He's looking to us. Remember I say God's just not going to reach down and start zapping people, start turning people's hearts towards him? We have to do that. Those of us who are in 
his kingdom. We look at John and we see the wonderful message. I, I could not have been John. I couldn't have cleared the path for Jesus. But you know what? Now that the path has been clear, I can throw in my two cents. <laughs> you know? We can throw in our two cents. Let's say.